woman to be living in North Carolina? Okay, well, the problem is uh, where I live, I live in a retirement town, and uh, there's a lot of young liberal retirees moving here. So you've got the old school, super old school, which I think are primarily uh, right-wing Republican types. Then you got the old school uh, Democrats. Do you, do you have any right-wing Republican types who are your friends that you talk to? Well, I'm lucky to have a few, and we, uh, I am one of these. Oh, oh, oh. oh, old Santa Mike laughed at that one. You actually like them. Why? Oh, I love them. I love them because primarily they're, they're libertarian-based also. You know, if they don't agree with me socially, you know, I, I'm a believer that the government should not be involved in my social issues, my social policy, whether I want to have an abortion, whether I want to, uh, you know, mow my lawn or grow a damn tree, pardon me. Well, I said that yesterday, and I was attacked viciously by the crony constitutionalists who want everyone to hold up to their own standard in their own mind. Well, uh, you know, Rand, I love Rand, but Rand is way... Yeah, he dropped that. Basically, he dropped to the bottom of the heap. I get it. But we know my okay, right, so you don't you don't want to back a losing horse, that's all. Well, Ellen, I'm glad you're a listener. I think that you are more I would say representative of my listenership than people may believe. I don't expect that I have a lot of R and C types listening uh to my show. I think that they probably despise me. Uh, they read the National Review, they read uh the Weekly Standard, and they read websites that promote the Republican uh National Committee bullet points but that's it so i have staked out the middle road a long time ago when i say the middle road i mean the independent road and the independent road is exactly what donald trump represents and that's exactly why he's hated by uh the republican party ellen thank you so much hold on send ellen a copy of government zero back in a minute welcome back to the independent savage nation, I guess that's what I should say. You know, that's why I changed the opening statement, the talk radio for the thinking person. I changed it at the beginning of January because I truly think that those who are drawn to my show are the more independent thinkers. They're not rigid ideologues uh, of Republican or Democrat uh, sides, cheeseheads versus knockhorse heads, as I said. And in that sense, I've got to keep doing what I do, which is do what I do whatever I'm interested in. So yesterday I talked about the world through a, sardine, through a sardine. Remember that one? I talked to a fisherman. Why would I do that? Because I need to stay grounded in the real world. Otherwise we can get just adrift like helium balloons and not know what we're talking about. Rob on KSFO in San Francisco, what's on your mind? This is the best show you've ever had, Michael. And the reason is you're talking about common sense. Trump has common sense. He can get things done. Rich Lowry and all of those people that wrote that article and the, and the headline are theorists. They live in a theory world. They've never gone out and had to build and manufacture and sell anything in <laughs> life. You're 100%. Bob, Bob, you talk about hitting the nail on the head. You look at these intellectuals, and they're all good people, I'm sure, and people I've respected in the past for their writings. Uh, at at the National Review with the GOP, they are. They live in a fake world and a, a world, a sandcastle world. They are academic elitists, in other words, and so they hate Donald Trump, who's a man from the real world. And moreover, they don't care whether whether he wins or loses. They want him to lose because they'd rather have Hillary Clinton. It's not that they love Donald Trump and uh, uh, Ted Cruz. They love Hillary Clinton because she's part of the establishment, as they are. That's what I really think it is. Well, I think that if Trump wins the convention, you will see those people begrudgingly support Trump. They're not going to support Clinton. Uh, uh, Clinton is way, way too far away from this. I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Even, even the National Review will come to their senses when he wins the convention, if he's not blocked from it by the corrupt Republican Party. Now, how many how many years, Rob, have you listened to the show off and on? I started listening to you probably oh eight years ago, I would guess. Where here in the Bay Area, San Francisco? Actually, no. I I travel forty some weeks a year for my work, and I tune in to the Bay Area's one on my internet. I stream it on my internet because it it comes in clear and it comes in at a time that's convenient for me. 
I'm you know actually, my show. My show is the number one listened to talk radio show in America on streaming. The number one streaming talk show in America. People say, "Oh, it doesn't mean anything." I'm a 27 share or 25 share rather. The next one has a 13.7 share. So more people listen to my stream than any other show. In fact, the next three shows put together. That's a very big statement, Rob, and I think that the independent message is enormously popular. It's resonating across the uh, the, the airwaves and on the Internet, and I'm really thrilled to hear what you just said. If you've listened for this long, do you detect something different in me today, by the way, in my tone? Yes, I, I, I can tell. that uh, t Today's a very serious show, uh, it, but you're, you nailed it with the common sense issue. That, that's why it's so important. that. Uh, but did you hear me talk about the cheese heads versus the knockwurst heads, that if we look down 100 years from now, someone reviewed 2016, they would say, what kind of nation was this, that they had people uh, on one side like cheese heads and the other ones wearing knockwurst on their heads? Uh, cheering for cheering for the parties. That's what it may. That's what it seems like to me. We're sitting in a stadium, and most people don't care about what's really going on. They made up their minds. They're rooting for the conservatives or the, or the Democrats, or they're voting rooting for the Republicans, and they don't even know what's going on. What about my theory on the hippie movement was not all bad? Do you agree or disagree? Well, I I totally agree with that. I'm a 64 year old guy. That okay? Uh, hold on. This is so good. I don't care if I sound somber. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Welcome back, Knockhorst Heads. Uh, I read a story this morning. Bill Johnson, brash Olympic downhill champion, dies at 55. I got to tell you, my, my immediate gut reaction was, I said, thank God I'm a wimp. I, I'm not cheering that he died. You don't get me wrong. But I, I smiled. I said, I outlived another athlete. It reminds me of the Mark Twain line. He says he gets all his exercise walking. <laughs> he gets all his exercise walking to the funerals of his more athletic friends. <laughs> but I'm not sharing that this guy died. It's, it, it's something else. Bill Johnson craves speed. The faster, the better. He stole cars as a kid, got in trouble for it, and was ordered by a judge to make a choice, ski school or jail. That's what caught my eye. He had a judge who was r rational. We don't have them anymore. Where a local judge gave him a choice. Go to ski school because you're good at skiing or go to jail. Now, could you imagine if we had judges in America today who can give kids a second chance? Because it's the daring kids who can save America. Not the drones who sit in an office all day long in a cubicle working for a web company, or for Facebook. He died Thursday at an assisted living facility in Oregon where he has been staying since a major stroke a few years ago, steadily took away the use of most of his body. Okay, that's sad. A man as active as that to be reduced to that. But the, the story is interesting on many levels. He um, stole cars as a kid, got in trouble for it, and was ordered by a judge to make a choice, ski school or jail. How many kids who went on to a life of crime because they were thrown into prison too young, would have benefited from a judge like that. That's what I'm trying to say to you. How many poor kids are in jail because of a minor crime? No bodily injury even. You know, small, minor property crime. Wouldn't it be nice if you had judges who could say, go into the army, for example, or go to jail? I have another friend whose father was given that choice from New York, believe it or not. He grew up in Little Italy, Italian, tough as nails, troublemaker, got caught. The judge gave him a choice, go into the military or go to jail. He went into the military, became one of the most heroic, highly decorated soldiers of World War II. See what I'm getting at? We don't have that anymore. It's, again, it's crazy, the country. There's no, there's no middle ground anymore. Everything is a fanatical answer. The left says, don't give him any jail, and the other one says, throw the book at him. Shawnee on WABC Radio in the Heart of the Blizzard. WABC New York, Shawnee, what's on your mind? Thank you so much. I listen to you every day, and I, you make me feel like I'm back home in Kansas and Oklahoma and Texas, where I feel people have some common sense. And I tell my friends, I moved here in 67, I still feel like a stranger in a strange land. And I tell my friends, this is not like a football game. I'm not rooting for a team. I, I like character, and I love my country, and that's what I care about. I don't understand these people. 
No, so you're a cheese. You're not. A, you're not. A, you're not wearing a cheese block on your head or a knockwurst on your head sitting in a stadium. Bibles kind of place. <laughs> <laughs> now you said you moved to New York when in 1957. No, 67. I was a secretary by day and a hippie by night, sort of. It, it, did you say 67? I, I'm trying to catch the year. I can't hear it. Yeah, yeah, 67. Oh, my God. That was just the beginning of the hippie era. You must have had a wild time in New York then. Uh, I saw the Who open for the doors. I went way back. The doors, God. Yeah. Well, that opened. Did you see? There's an old movie. I happen to love '50s movies, black and white movies, and uh, even early '60s. Well, even late '60s movies were still great. And this one was called The Apartment with Jack Lemmon and Shirley MacLaine. Did you ever see that movie? Of course. Well, that's you. That's you. You're the secretary in the office building, and all of the executives were hitting on you, and they thought they could do so with impunity. Am I right? Oh, I've got stories. <laughs> You know, I just watched that movie the other night on TCM, one of my favorite channels, irrespective of the liberalism of Mankiewicz. <laughs> I love the channel. And I couldn't believe the, 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 the plot line. She's an elevator operator, pretty young girl, played by Shirley MacLaine, and he has a, an apartment, a little walk-up that today nobody could afford in Manhattan. Certainly no junior executive could afford the apartment uh, that Jack Lemon had. And he gives his key out to executives above him where they can have their trysts. And as a result, they keep moving him up in the company because he knows their secrets, right? It's phenomenal. But the, the writing of that movie, from the point of view of the girl who's being exploited by the men, is amazing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And I worked in advertising, and it was really bad, man. It was crazy. Oh, my God. Well, there's another movie i got to mention right now that I'd recommend over the weekend. It was called A, A Woman's World, 1952. A Woman's World. It's about three executives brought to New York by the owner of, a, of an automobile manufacturing company, you know, like a level of a Ford. And he's, he's interviewing all of them with their wives to see which one will be made national sales director. And they, they come to his uh, apartment in Manhattan. Then they go to his estate out in Mill Neck, Long Island, this huge English-style estate. And... The wives are the critical element in the selection of who will become the national sales manager. It's when such things as that were important in America. Amazing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the plaintiff, yeah. All right, I'll give you some reading next weekend. It'll be snowing all winter. It's called Winter in America. I'll send you government zero for your reading pleasure. Guess what, folks? It's January. You know what happens in America in January? The East Coast gets hit by blizzards. It didn't occur with global warming. It started a long time ago, even when I was a mere lad. I had a little sled, the, uh, an American flyer. I have such great memories of snow. I never learned to ski because, well, we were poor kids didn't ski. You know, that white men can't jump. Remember that movie? I would say poor kids didn't ski in those days. I just didn't have the time, the money, nor the inclination. But the thing was, is I had a sled, and boy, did I enjoy it. I lived on uh, Longfellow Avenue in the Bronx, and above me was Bryant Avenue, way up the hill. And we would get on that sled and shoot down the hill. I remember once we almost got killed by a big dump truck that had a chain drive on it. Could you imagine a truck, a monster truck? Think of a big truck that has a chain on it with a chain drive. And my friend's uncle, his uncle was, I don't know how old he was. He must have been 18. We were 8, 10, who knows? He was the old guy. Well, the uncle was on the bottom, then my friend, then and me, or I was squashed in the middle. I don't know which. And, you know, you go careening down the hill, and you lose control of the sled. You go under the wheel of a truck. You're just a statistic, right? But those those are great days. I remember building the snowmen. Kids love the snow. They love dad's home, mom's home, everyone's home. You know, the, the kitchen's functional. They're eating at home for the first time. No takeout meal. They haven't seen their parents together for a long time. They don't know that the father would rather be at work today making a living. They don't even know what a living is. And that's why they're natural Democrats. They go to school, and they come out with the same view as that of a child. They think everything is given to them. And so they want uh, a demagogue like Obama promises to give them something for nothing. Or Hillary, I'll give you something for nothing. But if you would ask me to divide the country up in a, in a single statement, I did the cheesehead versus the knockwurst heads, right? I'll do it another way. I would say that the Democrats are offering 
I would say that uh, Donald Trump would be offering a chicken in every pot, meaning, you know, happy days are here again. He's going to make America great again. He's going to create jobs, right? A chicken.